What does CERN, the World Economic Forum, and a seat at the UN have in common? Well, we know that CERN is located, its headquarters are in Switzerland, Geneva, Switzerland. And um, the World Economic Forum is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. And, uh, you know, they have the Geneva Conference and all of that. And um, I was thinking about the World Economic Forum since we spoke about it last night. And I was thinking, what if CERN, you know, with that big circle like Lord of the Rings, you know? What if it would be like the seat of authority? What if it would? Um, and I started thinking, I don't know how I found it out, but um, they put in for a seat at the UN Security Council is what they did. And I, I want to look a little bit more into that if you're just tuning in. Thank you. Oh my gosh, there goes my nose starting to itch again, you all. This is ridiculous. It really is. Every time I start to do a video, mm, that is not nice. So um, let's see if this will do just the screen, will it? It may not. Let's see. Yeah, I know what to do. The screen and me is what it will do. Um, Let's see this. We're looking at Geneva, Switzerland. Um, let's see if I if I do just the screen, what will it show? Let me see if I can fix this, you all. I want to try to see if I do just the screen. Oh, I don't have a window capture. That was my problem. So um, I'll do a window capture. I can. I think I can do this. I think I can. Boom! I can do it. I can do it. There, let's try this again, you all. We are okay. We're okay, you all. It's all right. Yes, it is. We've got a window capture. We're looking at CERN, which is located in Geneva, Switzerland. That's what we're looking at. Um, hello, Shalawam, Anthony. The Large Hadron Collider and the birthplace of the World Wide Web. Isn't that interesting? Hello, Christine Mott. Yes, you did. And I think you might have got a notification, Christine, honey. What do you say? Do you think you got a notification? I bet you did. Yes, you did. Yes, her did, mommy. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, you all. We look at this, CERN. Look at that great big old um, thing. You know, this does look like the ancient... Um, excuse me it does look like that ancient stuff like uh stargate things and you know like that but let's go back over here cern okay un security council seat could propel switzerland onto the global stage so let's look at this what would switzerland gain from a seat on the un security council i think this is probably important i really kind of think it does that's great, Christine. You are into it. You are intuitive. Switzerland is a candidate for a non-permanent seat. This is on um, January the 13th. It was published. A non-permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council. The vote uh, in June of 2022 is seen as a formality. So why does Switzerland want to mix with the big powers, you all? Why do they want to mix with the big powers? Let me get these other glasses on because this might this might prove to be something you might want to pay attention to. Since um, Switzerland has the World Economic Forum headquarters there and CERN is located there. But I don't want to be Switzerland. I've never heard this before, but look at this, you all. But I don't want to be Switzerland. You re may remember how in the comedy series that bears his name, Jerry Seinfeld resisted his neighbor's request to use his apartment as a neutral place to host an interrupted game of risk. Okay, so um, let me copy that. I'm not going to click into it, but I wanted to copy that because I never did like Jerry Springfield. I didn't. I'm just saying. 
I don't, I don't really care much for comedy, but to each their own. These words could just as easily refer to the Alpine nation itself, which also does not appear to want to be Switzerland anymore. In other words, in other words, the epitome of state neutrality and would prefer to take part in global politics instead. So they want to take part in global politics instead. By seeking a two-year non-permanent seat on the UN Security Council, the country is sending a signal that it wants to do more than just make hefty financial contributions to the world body. It would like to have a say-so too. The country has set out its case in the video below. A seat on the UN Security Council offers a tangible benefit, but also carries some hidden risk, according to the critics and supporter of Swiss membership. So look at this, you all. So um, a two-year non-permanent seat on the UN Security Council is sending a signal that Switzerland wants to make more than just hefty financial contributions to the world body. Watch this. So they already make hefty financial contributions to the world body in Switzerland. Okay. Look at this. The World Economic Forum is an international NGO lobbying organization. Um, and it's located in um, Geneva, Switzerland, you all. The World Economic Forum is an international non-governmental and lobbying organization based in Cologne, Canton of Geneva, Switzerland. It was founded in 1971 on January the 24th by German engineer and economist Charles Schwab, committed to improving the state of the world. So we know that Mr. Schwab he has a very um, persuasive way of um, getting things done. And he just so happens to have this World Economic Forum, which is located in Geneva, Switzerland. And he's a lobbying organization. It's international. And um, Switzerland is seeking a two-year non-permanent seat on the UN Security Council because the country is sending a signal that it wants to do more than just make hefty financial contributions to the world body. It would like to have a say-so too. Well, it would like to have a say-so. Okay, it would, just like Mr. Klaus Schwab. Um, you can see it right here. Uh, King Charles on why we need a great reset. So if Switzerland has a seat on the Security Council, um, which is where the uh, World Economic Forum is located, um, right here, then that would mean that Mr. Schwab's organization would be able to lobby and also give money and they could um, have a say so at the UN the World Economic Forum could yes it could hello everyone they could have a say so now mind you we've got CERN located in Geneva Switzerland right here and this right here is um, it um, was founded in 1954 to coordinate the research efforts of 12 European countries. Um, it's a nuclear research thing, and they want to, they're looking for dark matter. They are. Um, some say they want to bring something in, you know, bring it into this realm that we live in. Um, they do. That's right, Christine, honey. So um, we've got Mr. Schwab, we got um, Switzerland, they want a seat at the UN. So, um, Switzerland could strengthen its network 
as a member of the council and thus build its influence on an international level. Well, that's just great. It's just great because Mr. Schwab is an international NGO lobbying organization, the World Economic Forum. So this would fit right in because they will build their influence on an international level. Isn't that wonderful, you all? That is absolutely wonderful for them. How how on earth did they come up with this, you all, at this period of time in history? Somebody's pretty... Um, pretty smart wouldn't you think pretty um strategic in their planning that's right because it comes on the heels of the where are we at it comes on the heels of the great reset right here you see that yes absolutely so um if they can get that seat which they've already voted on it preliminary um they can have a say so you all let me come back to this screen hello there um, closer contact with other Security Council members has a downside. The Swiss UN ambassador said that uh, he knows personal experience that there is a considerable risk that other states will try to apply pressure. pressure. Now, the only pressure I think is going to be applied is by a lobbying organization like um, right here. They, they get their big money people. So I think they're right. I really do I think that they're right. Um, so let's look at this, you all. Setting the agenda. Setting the agenda. Switzerland can make a voice, make its voice heard and in negotiations and votes and would be take the presidency, you all know. <laughs> Could you, could you believe that, you all? According to Mueller, a seat on the Security Council enables the holder to take substantive positions and set priorities. Um, Switzerland can make its voice heard in negotiations and votes and would take the presidency of the council once or twice where it can set priorities, you all. So could you imagine Switzerland at the head of the UN can take the presidency. Well, that's perfect. It's perfect for the World Economic Forum, which is located in Switzerland, you all. It is. Seeds are for planting. That's right. Hello, Christina Faith. Yes, that's right. So, um, Oh, this Gino Astalian, who is critical of Swiss membership in the Security Council, conceded to the NZZ, NZZ that the council members will have more influence than ordinary UN members. Um, look at this. Both other critics, such as former Ambassador Paul Weidmer, argue that the five veto powers alone are in control of the Security Council. The five veto powers. Anyone who doesn't have a permanent seat is almost irrelevant. From this perspective, Switzerland is exposing itself to foreign and domestic critics without winning any influence. But the non-permanent members of the Security Council can absolutely achieve something, especially if they join forces. Uh, so Sweden and later Ireland, Norway... The council succeeded in securing access to Syria for humanitarian and organizations. So the elected Security Council members also ensured, despite tensions between China and the United States, they could pass a draft revolution for this thing in 2020. And they did, you all. They passed a draft revolution. So let me, let me see this right here, you all. Look at this. Geneva was the headquarters of the League of Nations since 1966. It has hosted the European Office of the United Nations. Well, 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 what did they just say, you all? Geneva was the headquarters of Geneva, Switzerland. Was the headquarters of the League of Nations since 1966. And it has hosted the European Office of the United Nations. How very convenient. Really, it's really convenient, don't you think? It's perfect. 
It's the perfect plan, you all. The perfect plan. It's all falling right into place. Just as it has been planned, it has. Increasingly, Geneva is competing with other host cities such as Vienna, Helsinki, and Oslo. But you know what? Uh, the Swiss seat on a Security Council will strengthen the international Geneva. And that's what they want. Uh, multilateralism is on the wane. So on the Security Council, Switzerland could push for greater multilateralism, which is important to Geneva, you all. Look at this. A role as a mediator. Look at that. Um, the influence at the cost of democracy. They all have very powerful influence there, you all. The UN Security Council and Switzerland's candidacy. Let's look at this, you all. The Security Council is an organ of the United Nations, and it consists of five permanent members, the U.S., Russia, China, France, and Great Britain, and 10 non-permanent members. The non-permanent members are elected by the General Assembly for a two-year stint. For historical reason, the five permanent members of the UN, of the Security Council, they're, they're called the victors of World War II. They have the right of a veto. They can block any decision. The non-permanent members, therefore, have an important role as mediating voices to resolve the deadlocks, you all. So um, that's really interesting. So they can have their say-so. U.S., Russia, China, France, and Great Britain. Five permanent powers, you all. They have the say-so. Let's look at this, because uh, this is kind of important. It really is very important. Um, according to the U.N. Charter, the Security Council has the primary responsibility for maintaining world peace. World peace. It can impose sanctions or approve military interventions if the international security is threatened. Its decisions are binding under international law for all UN members, in contrast to the decisions in the General Assembly. Um, Switzerland is applying for a non-permanent seat on the Security Council for 2023 through 2024. Under a slogan... Under the slogan, a plus for peace. So the government approved and submitted the candidacy in 2011 after lengthy consultations with Parliament. The elections are taking place in New York on June of 2022. The electing body is the UN General Assembly comprising 193 countries. Switzerland's chances are good because the only other competitor for the two seats is Western nations in Malta. Western nations in Malta, you all. So June of 2022, we have, they want this seat on the Security Council right here for 2023 and 2024. That is next year. Two very, very critical years. They're very critical because this year is ending. So they can have a lot of influence. There can be a lot of lobbying that is able to take place because the World Economic Forum uh, is headquartered in Switzerland and they, Mr. Schwab, is committed to improving the state of the world with his international NGO lobbying organizations. That's right. That's right. So um, let's see what happens, you all. So let's come over here. The UN Security Council seat. We're looking at June the 7th of 2022. When is the uh, June of 2022? Um, it was updated on June the 10th of 2022. The UN Security Council seat could propel Switzerland onto the global stage. If all goes according to plan. Switzerland will sit on the United Nations Security Council in 2023 and 2024 at the very heart, the very heart of the world's most important multilateral body. The Swiss candidacy will be examined on Thursday, the 9th of June, by the 193 member states of the General Assembly. Barring any surprises, 
one of the two mandates promised to the Western European bloc will go to Switzerland. The election is anonymous, and a state must collect two-thirds of the vote. Look at that. You ever see that um, Left Behind movie? They had that thing right there. I think they had something like that on the wall, and they had that Nicholas Carpathian, Carpathian or whoever he was, and he had the members of the UN people sitting there, and um, he was he was the embodiment of you know what, and um, he was able to influence their mind. You know, Cthulhu, according to history, let's say history, is able to take on human form. And Cthulhu was able to um, change the mind of the Kraken who was sent out to destroy him by Zeus and the other gods. When he got inside of him, he was about to destroy him. But Cthulhu used his mind-altering powers and instead sent the Kraken on them, you all, so he can influence people with his mind. Cthulhu can make himself as big as a continent or as small as a man, you all. That's right. So we're looking at this right here, the UN Security Council seat. Um, you can see it in there. Yes, uh, the line that intersects the yes, you can. The three, oh, wait a minute. Are you talking about up here? Let's see. I'm trying to look up there with the Geneva, the Geneva Solutions or something. Okay, they got this Security Council. Let's see what happened. Never before has the country had such a springboard into the international scene. Never before has a foreign minister had such an opportunity to promote Switzerland um, diplomacy of good offices and to establish the reputation of an international Geneva. In this opportunity, the president of the Confederation, Ignazio Cassis, could find his lucky star. Why we're talking about it, you all. This is important. Why they're talking about it. Uh, the UN Security Council is dominated by the five great powers. United States, Russia, China, France, Great Britain. They have veto power and their influence on the other ten non-permanent members cannot be overstated. However, Switzerland already holds key mandates in all important UN bodies and has been committed since 2013. Switzerland holds key mandates since 2013 uh, together with about 20 other members. A long-standing demand to reform the Security Council. They're going to, oh, oh, they're going to reform it, you all. It will be able to take a cue from the other nations that could use as a springboard to launch peace and security building initiatives like like this you all like this the great reset just like that yes just like that for example in 2022 norway a non-permanent member of the security council hosted the first overseas meeting of a delegation from taliban regime with the members of afghan civil society as well as united states britain and france in 2013 to 14, the Luxembourg and Jordan succeeded in establishing humanitarian access to Syria uh, in the midst of a civil war, despite opposition from Russia and China. Um, compatible with Swiss neutrality, neutrality, they're probably the only nation in the world. You all get this. Switzerland is probably the only nation in the world whose admission to the Security Council is more debated at home than internationally. The Swiss application was submitted as early as 2011 and initially opposed. So the Swiss People's Party nationalist circles tried to block the project on several occasions in the name of neutrality. Uh, but the parliament was consulted and linked and confirmed its support after the National Council, the Council of Security, the Council of States clearly rejected the motion two months ago. Um, so look at this. So 20 to 23 to 24, the Federal Council emphasized Switzerland could continue to fully exercise neutrality. Um, they had parliaments. Uh, Switzerland's mandate should begin in January of 2023 for a two-year period. 
So 2023 for a two-year period that will take them into January of 2025. Perfect. That's when the United States goes into the new, you know, year of, you know, what? That's about right. Um, I wanted to see the updated thing, you all. I didn't get to see the updated. They said it was updated. But did you see anything in there that they would... Um, did Switzerland get a seat at um, this place, you all? Did they get a seat? We've got CERN located in there. We've got the World Economic Forum. We've got the Circle of CERN, the Future Circular Collider. Looks like the ring, one ring to rule them all. One ring to bind them. Look at that, you all. So we have to ask ourselves, did Switzerland... S did Switzerland, a Swiss, Switzerland, win a seat for two years at the UN? 2023 through 2025. Yes, they did. So we've got it right here. Yes, they did. And I think that's what it says. Yes, they did. So you're going to see an enormous amount of change. And guess who's going to be spearheading that change? Who's going to have a big say-so? Right here, you all. Right here. That's right. This man... And this man, King Charles and um, Klaus Schwab, they're going to have an enormous say-so. Switzerland merits seat at the UN Security Council, June the 20th of 2019. It's hoping for a seat, um, their candidature for a seat on the UN Security Council. Um... It is a candidate for a non-permanent seat. Um, Swiss bid for the UN considery. Um, you know, um, some 11 years after presenting its candidacy to the UN to the Security Councilor, Switzerland was elected by the General Assembly on the 9th of June of 2022 with 187 votes out of 190 to take a seat in 2023 through 2024. This was a great satisfaction for the president of the Confederation who traveled to New York for the occasion, you all. Did you all see that in the news? Did you? Uh, I don't remember um, seeing it because it says Switzerland is committed to a peaceful international order. That's what it said. Peaceful international order. Just like them. Just like um, them improving the state of the world. Um, so I think there's really a whole lot more to this than what meets the eye. I really do. There is massive change headed this way, you all. There is massive, massive change. Um, and um, when you get into a position of power... You're not going to let go of that power. You're not going to let go of that power. You're going to use everything that you can to maintain that power. You think they're going to let somebody take that power away from them? Absolutely not. They're not, you all. They're not. Too much is at stake. Way too much is at stake, you all. Um, do you think that... Wait, what if something happens and they somehow take the seat of the presidency somehow at the UN? Really, what if something happens? They'll have say-so or something like that. Yeah, something's going to come onto the scene. You are something very, very, very powerful is coming onto the scene. Um with this um, 
Switzerland and CERN and the World Economic Forum and the UN seat and the Great Reset and stuff like that. Something major is going down. Major, major, major. And I hope that it ends up well. I really do. Uh, and I hope the whole entire world benefits from it. Everybody benefits and not anybody is um, feeling the pain of what is coming. I can have hope. I can. Let me put this in here, you all. I'm going to put all these... Um, I'm going to put these links on here. I'm going to do it references. That way you know every single place that we went to right there. You see them right there. These are every single links that we went to. The Noahide Law. The Noahide Law. Um, um, let's look at this. The Noahide Law. The Noahide Law. Let me just type that in, you all. Uh, Noahide Law and the W O R L D Economic Forum. Um, I'll put this link on here since I clicked into it, is what I'll do. I'll put the link on here. If I click into it, rest assured, we're going to document every single thing. So nobody can say, oh, well, you didn't document it. Yes, we did. We did. Um, let's see what this is. Uh, the Institute of... Uh, oh, my gosh. I just saw something. You are, I literally, I just saw something. Look at this. Look at this. Unless my eyes deceive me, look at this abbreviation. NGO. You see that? NGO. You see that? Charles Schwab, NGO. World Economic Forum, NGO. Um, UN is an accredited NGO. It's like that. Yeah. So, let's look at the rest of it. The Institute of the Noahide Code UN is an accredited NGO with consultative status promoting peace through the values put in place by the universal laws. International. Improving the world. Um, these laws are the key to opening up a dialogue between people of all nations, regardless of creed, religion, or social class, they represent the common bond of all people across the globe. Um, Seventy nations is expected to enable cooperation toward economic and social programs that will benefit all mankind. Included in this will be an international court based on biblical principles. Um, from now on, we follow these seven Noahide laws. What on earth is, what am I in, you all? Um, well, let me put it in here. I accidentally clicked on it, you all, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to click on it, but I did. It popped on here, so now I have to put it on here. Um, I do. Let's do this. Um... The USA uh, honor anti-Gentile, yeah, mandatory nature of it. Um, we do not want to look into that. I have looked into that before. You go look at that. 
You want to read about the Noahide laws, you, you go look at it on yourself. I will not put that on here, okay? I've already been there. I've done that on my own, and I know I'm not going to do that, you all. I'm not. You go look at it yourself, okay? You can do it. I promise you can do it. Um, justice, justice and Law, one day ago. Agenda articles explore the forum's latest opinion articles, timely analysis, uh, and explainers from leaders in business, politics, and civil society. Filter by global justice and law. Can you see it, you all? Um... That's all I'm going to say. Nothing. I really am not. You can you can follow that link. Okay, you can. Um, if this is at the UN headquarters. No, no, I don't want to go there. You all can go there yourself. Okay. You click into that. And, um, okay, you can do that. That's right. You click into it. And, uh. So somebody put that in the comment section and Gina honey looked down there and I saw that. That's what I saw and you made me Google that. Actually I was I was uh, compelled to Google it. You I was. Wow. Um Yeah, I think we've seen the one world religion open up the headquarters of the Pope is involved. Um yeah. Oh, Judith Bison, Bison, I don't know what your comment's about. I, I don't. Um, whoop, there she is. <laughs> that, that makes me laugh. That uh, changes my mindset. That's right. You all, I lost. Let me tell you how many subscribers I lost from doing that dance. Well, you, let me come over there because every time I do a dance, I lose subscribers. Let me... <laughs> Let me see how many people I lost. I'm going to tell you how many subscribers that Gina Honey lost doing that dance. I'm going <laughs> to. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, they haven't told me yet. I gained them all back. Okay. I, I had lost eight initially. I did. So I, I've gained them back. So that's fine. But I do every time. <laughs> that's okay that's all right you all i dance from my spirit and my heart and it makes me feel good besides i was getting sleepy i thought i gotta wake myself up uh, hello there apple brooks honey so i decided i would dance that's all that's right mm. you all that's right so we're going to flip through all of these right here we're going to look at everything that i clicked into we um, went to um what would Switzerland gained from a seat on the UN Security Council. Uh, the UN Security Council right here, if all goes according to plan, which it did, they will sit on the United Nations Security Council 2023 and 2024 up into 2025 of January of 2025. And they got approved for the council seat. Uh, we have CERN, which is located at this headquarters, you all, right here. Um, we have the World Economic Forum, which is located at uh, Geneva also. Um, we, you can see CERN wants to build the biggest, baddest particle collider. It's a great big ring. Uh, and we got the one ring to rule them all. You do, you all. Did Switzerland win a seat at the Security Council? Yes, they did, you all. It's a non-permanent right now. Non-permanent. And then somehow somebody typed in the word Noah Hyde, and um, all I needed to see was this one thing right here, these this abbreviation right here. As soon as I saw that, it took me to right here, Charles Schwab, W E F, right there. So yeah, that's how far we went. Uh, it is. That's what happened. You all, let's put this back at CERN. Look at CERN, you all. I'm, I'm done with it. I am. You all, uh, that's what I was, uh, ran in, I ran into this that this morning, and I said I'd like to share something about it. 
later today if it's meant because uh, I, I wanted to. That's why I had to dance. I had to wake myself up and get myself in the mood, get my vibration up to do this. I did. So I did it. That's right, you all. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's right, you all. That's exactly right. So I am going to go, you all. You can research it yourself. Um, if you look at the Noahide laws, I'm going to warn you, you may not like what you see. If you read really good into it, you may not like it at all. You may not. You probably won't like it. But some people may like it. Um, yeah, some people may, but you can do that on your own. I'm not going to do that here. I'm not. That's right. I am not. Keep our head on a swivel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious you all yeah that's right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go you all that's okay it's all right um yeah we're not going nowhere until our time is up we're going to keep on pressing on is what we're going to do keep on keeping on if we want to win that battle and that battle will be won one day by the light uh, we'll win that battle when it's all said and done, that's right. We know how the story ends. That's how, that's how it goes. Um, and if you're just watching, I'm going to put you over here. I want you to know that every single link that I clicked into, if you look right here, I have put it under the reference. You can find it in the description of the video. Every single link, even the one I didn't want to click into, it's all right here. Um, that's where it's located. Right there. So, um, with that being said, you all, thank you, and um, hello, wherever you are in any part of the world, hello. From my heart to yours, love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thank you so much for watching this, you all. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. If you want to hit that subscribe button, do it. You may find yourself unsubscribed because people have been getting unsubscribed without them even knowing it. Maybe that's why you don't get a subscription or a live notice because they unsubscribe you. And if you want to go check out that video and give me a thumbs up because I lose subscribers on it. I was dancing from my spirit to raise my vibration. And it worked. It woke me up to do this video because I was getting sleepy. Have a wonderful evening, you all. Love you and thank you so much. Thank you. Good night.